Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. I'm Izzy Swan and today I'm going to show you how I made this. A crazy looking wine barrel vessel looking thing. Now this was a fun project and it turned out pretty cool, but what's really cool about this project is the way it was made. So this face is a project I've been wanting to do for a while. I had a couple of ideas on how I could make this work, but I didn't want to use good material for this, so I picked up some 2x4s from the local hardware store, three of them, and then I cut 48 inches off of one end of each of the 2x4s. Now once I had those cut to size, I glued them all up, making sure to smother, smother the glue all over the place, and I didn't plane them down or anything, I just left them in the raw form, and then really clamped them very well. I kind of gave this thing every chance to fail, so to speak, just really wanted to test this out. Now once the glue had dried, I came back with a card scraper, scraped off any excess, and then ran one side down the sable saw to clean it up. Now I want to set my table saw blade to an angle that will complement nine segments. So I used my miter set, set on the nine position, cut that piece out, and then use that as a gauge to set the angle of my table saw blade. Now once I had that done, I ran the pieces back through the table saw and cut that angle. So I'm cutting out basically wedge pieces to create the nine pieces of the vase going all the way around. Now I screwed a little block to my fence and then I took the miter set out and set my uh, gauge back to exact 90 degrees. I use that all the time. My miter set lives on my table saw. Uh, and then once I had that done, I went through and just cut all the pieces to 14 inches in length using the stop block and the miter gauge. So this is the kind of the fun part that I was really wanting to try, and this is using an elliptical jig on my bandsaw. Now I just picked up this new Rikon bandsaw and I've been wanting to try a project with it since I got here. Really been impressed so I wanted to do something a little bit fun with it now that I have a little bit more resaw capacity. So I set up this kind of angle looking thing on the end of my elliptical jig so I could put the wedge pieces on and it would hold the wedge pieces at a perfect 90 degree angle to the blade. Now once that was done I adjusted it so I could move the sled forward and backward or the might or the uh, <laughs> the gauge backwards and forward so I could cut one side of the f you know what would be the outside and then just slide it forward and it would cut the inside of the barrel and I ended up with nine pieces that looked like that so this really worked out well I, and I had the stops on so I just would push it back against the back stop and then push it forward against the front stop and then I could cut out each piece that way and it was actually really quick I was really happy with the Hoye, this whole system worked out. Each piece was just flawless. As long as I had it set at a 90 degree angle to the blade, and I took my time with the cut, the cuts were actually pretty clean too, and I was really just thrilled with the results of this. I'm definitely going to be doing some stuff like this in the future. Now once I had all the pieces cut, I took them over to my big sander and just sanded out what's the, in, the inside of it, and cut touched up the outside a little bit, and then knocked off any little bit of a burr that was left with some hand sandpaper. Now typically when I'm laying out a segmented round or a column, I just put tape down and I set the pieces on and then roll it up. You know, So I rolled it up to test it, make sure the fit was good, it looked good, uh, added some white glue to it just on the one side. And then I rolled the whole thing up. Now I went around, this was a little tricky because of the weird you know, kind of parabolic slope to it. And uh, after I squeezed the center tight, what I noticed was because I'd squeezed the center so, so so tight that the top and bottom pieces kind of deflected out a little bit. So rather than, I kept fighting it and fighting it, and I was like, all right, I've got to stop here. And I just cut out some uh, holes in a couple pieces of scrap plywood that were just a touch bigger than the uh, top and bottom of the barrel at this point. Now I did cut these a little bit long because I knew at some point I was going to trim up each of the ends, so this actually worked out really well. So I just used some clamps on the top and bottom and forced it down and that sucked everything in. Really nice tight miters, everything looked really good. 
once I had it all clamped into position. Now after the clamps had dried, I just took them off and checked everything and it actually turned out really well. So this whole clamping system worked out pretty pretty good, which I'm really happy with after all the effort I put into it. So all the joints looked good, everything looked great. Now the next thing I needed to do was kind of create this saddle that this barrel could sit in and I could use that over on the bandsaw to trim off each end of the barrel. So I just used some scrap pieces of plywood again, uh, cut the round out and I could set the barrel in there so it was level and then run it through the bandsaw. So I raised the bandsaw, uh, got, uh, got an old fence thingy up, blade protector up, and then used the uh, the sled that I'd made to just follow along the blade because you can't really follow a straight line so I'm looking down below the piece so I can keep the blade tight up against those two vertical stanchions and that kept a pretty accurate uh, cut and the miters look I mean if you can see the miters in this they're flawless I was just really impressed with the way that came out so the miter set just makes it so easy to set these up perfect so once I had that done of course you know there's always the sanding part so I went through and sanded it down with some, uh, I think I used 100 grit for the initial sanding on the outside. And then came back with some um, 220, I believe. Now once I had that done, I needed to kind of flatten out the bottom. They weren't perfect. They were close. Just a little bit of light hand sanding made the bottom nice and flat. And I wanted to put a bottom on this. And then So rather than datoing anything out on the bottom, I just sanded it flat and then took it over to my um, router with a 45 degree angle bit in it and routed out the inside of it. Oh, before I did that, I marked out the shape with a pencil. So once I had the shape marked out, I took the barrel over to my router. I just put my router upside down in a clamp with a 45 degree uh, bit in it and routed out the inside of the bottom of it. And then I brought the piece that I cut out over on the bandsaw and again, just did the same thing, routed out a 45 degree chamfer on it and then glued it. I actually forgot to press play while I was gluing it together. So I glued the bottom onto the bottom of the or the bottom piece onto the bottom of the barrel and then again used the sled over at the bandsaw to cut off any excess. And once I had that done, I added a little sand. There were a couple small gaps where I just used some glue and um, sawdust to fill it up and then sanded it out and it looked really good. I think because there was a lot of tear out in this when I did the routing, um, again it's pine and it's soft and it's, it's really it's like kind of like a corner grain so it did some tear out. Uh, if I used a hardwood I probably wouldn't have that problem. So once everything was sanded I was happy with it. I went around, I wanted to, it was pine so I wanted to add a little color to it. I used a gunstock red or a gunstock I believe it's called and just painted a stripe down the center of each of the segments and then kind of let it dry just a touch before I f smoothed out the rest of the stain and that kind of gave it a little bit of contrast so it was darker in the center lighter on the sides and then uh, put a quick coat of spray lacquer on it and then came back and painted the inside of the whole thing just a, a it's a I forget it's a brown it's a Jacob Brown and then once I painted it I used my torch to dry the paint inside real quick uh, if you're using latex paint, you can just use a torch and it'll dry super fast. Now once that was done, I took my burner out and kind of just burnt a little bit of the corners where the segments met and then around the top and bottom a little bit just to add a little more flavor. Now this looks a little bit standing out right now, but what I'm going to do is come back with a glazing compound and glaze this whole thing. So when I'm glazing this, what I'm going to do is start with a really light uh, really light coat of glaze and then I'm just going to keep brushing it and keep brushing it and then I'm going to each dry my brush off about every oh three or four minutes and just keep going around till it gets this really it just kind of darkens everything up and it gives it this really nice opaque look so once I had that done I took the spray lacquer and sprayed it out again I put three coats on and it looked really good not bad for pine of course I made a big mess out of my shop <laughs> Three two by fours for that little vase, unbelievable, but it did turn out nice. So there it is guys, what do you think? Not too shabby. Now the process was a lot of fun, there was a little bit of a learning curve to get everything right, but the miter set made everything come in nice, the jig for the bandsaw was awesome, the bandsaw is awesome. The process was a lot of fun and figuring it out using the table saw and the bandsaw to make it all work and the crazy jigs of course. 
Really fun project and I'm really happy with the way it came out. Nice tight joints and all of that. So I wanna say thank you very much for watching today. I certainly appreciate it. You know, let me know what you thought about this process. Overkill, enough, pretty cool, bleh. Let me know, I wanna hear from you. I want this to be a conversation. I wanna to talk to you guys and get some feedback from you. That kind of stuff is very important to me. So let me know what you thought about the jigs. Let me know what you thought about the process. Is there anything I could have done better? Is there anything I could have done that you might have liked more? Like put a handle on it. I've been thinking about it. Okay, so you're still here. Quick shout out to Von Thompson, Trustin Timber, and I Jessup. I'll put links to their channels below. If you guys remember, uh, back uh, three weeks ago, I did a video on a disc sander, and at the end of it, I showed you guys a rabbit. Now, one of the things I wanna do is help grow the community, and to make it fun, I'm doing this little thing where I'm sending this rabbit, which I showed in the, the video with the sander, to one of those three creators. Now, they're gonna use it in one of their videos, and the first person that sees it and says, I found it, I have to comment, I found it on the video that the rabbit is in, I'm gonna send them a $100 Amazon gift gift card just for playing along being a good sport and having fun so growing this community is super important to me and absolutely encourage you guys to really check out YouTube for other woodworking creators other makers other content creators that do stuff that you enjoy and Von Thompson Trustin Timber and I Jessup are doing some really fun stuff talk to you guys soon